What up, players? It's Warboss Tay up in this mug t talking today about the Felgor Ravagers, the first new beastmen in Warhammer 40k in a long time. I do remember there being a couple of metal beastmen figures in the range like a long time ago, but seeing them here in plastic, they look like they stepped out of their Warhammer 40k, uh, Warhammer Fantasy beastmen army and they strapped on a couple of they, they bolted on some rivets to their armor and they picked up a couple of uh, technological doodads here and there like the shaman has a uh, a little bit of a bionic eye on the skull in his staff you can see the the iron horn who's their champion has a bolt pistol and the chain sword most of the rest of them are just armed with hand weapons and they're charging forward and uh, they don't look like they have too much going on in the way of technology, I th oh here this gnarl scar has a iron fist or a power fist. The toxhorn, which is written in the article to be more technologically minded than his beastly brethren, has a gas mask and uh, some noxious fumes coming out of his hand. There, it's interesting to see the beastman aesthetic of mutated subhumans who've been whose whose bodies have been warped into this hybrid of human and and like goat animal has been a very interesting um, concept, especially in Warhammer Fantasy. In the old school Warhammer Fantasy roleplay, these monsters were terrifying because in the fiction, there is no clear reason why one day you would wake up and you would have hooves or your arm would be replaced by a tentacle. Or one day you'd wake up and your, your face is long or you have horns coming out of your head. It was uh, terrifying for the peasants in the old world to think that for no fault of their own, they could all of a sudden have these terrible mutations that would instantly make them branded as uh, worshippers of the dark gods and fit only for the pyre to be burnt alive at the stake by very, very um, terrifying witch hunters. Uh, this was also in the fiction t scary for the nobles and for the richer, more wealthy and affluent citizens of the old world because it meant that your money and all of your status and stuff, it didn't really matter. There was no real reason why you would suddenly wake up and have some mutation. Sometimes it could just be a cruel trick of the gods or maybe you were exposed to some warp stone. For some reason, one day you wake up and you're no longer completely human. And then I think in the fiction, it says you're just going to keep mutating like it's just a matter of time the minute you start seeing scales on your arm or you wake up with an extra eyeball in your hand that's like the signal that there's there's no hope you're just going to have this slow descent into madness and then become a beast or have so many mutations that you're not fit to live in public anymore and then you're cast out and then i don't think they were called beastmen uh, in the old warhammer fantasy role play there were these roving bands of just mutants that were abandoned and cast out by society so they lived by uh, like robbing people on the road on the highways and uh, they didn't look like this they didn't all have uh, these goat looking half human half goat bodies in the fiction they were just mutants and they lived in the forest and uh, like one guy could have feathers and the next guy could have like a dog head and then this girl over here would uh, have tentacles for arms and feathers and scales and like there was no limit to the creativity that you could have if you were if you were afflicted by these mutations and that's what i love about the old fiction and here the beastmen the mutants have been pretty much uh corralled <laughs> herded into this uh very very um simple visual aesthetic yeah they're just big goat people with hooves and um, they all have the same look. Some of them might have an extra arm or an extra eye, but yeah, those old school mutants and those mutations that the dark gods would just bestow upon you one day, that was the real terrifying part for being a citizen of the old world. And that was also what made it the most interesting. In Gallo Fall... Yeah, the final expansion for the Gallo Dark season of Kill Team, you've got, I guess, people, everybody's fighting over this Gallo Dark um space hulk for a treasure and stuff and uh this felgor ravager herd are going to be slaughtering people in the name of the dark gods so let's take a look at what you actually get in their kit here the box contains 10 hooved and horned beastmen each of which can be built either as a felgor warrior or one of 10 unique operatives 
On top of that staggering variety, the sprues provide 15 heads and 15 sets of horns, each fully compatible with each other and any other body on the kit. That's 225 possible combos before including the extra heads for specialists. Not only that, but the uh, conversion mech part of my brain instantly lit up when I saw that there are 15 heads and 15 sets of horns. Because now this means that you can have traitor guardsmen, you can have uh, chaos guardsmen where you don't need to buy a traitor guardsman kit. You could just use some extra Cadian shock troops, especially the older ones now that are a little too big and cartoony for the modern uh, Astra Militarum aesthetic. You could have those old Cadian models, those boxes that are just gathering dust. And uh, if you want to build up some traitor guardsmen, just build up some Cadian troopers. And instead of putting on the helmeted heads, put some beastmen heads on there. Let's see what they look like if now they are chaos traitor guards worshiping the dark gods with goat heads all right you know the collector part of my brain loves this very much because beastmen have always been really fun to paint there are a lot of skin uh, most of the models are skinned then you've got some cloth and then the fur so it's interesting finding possible combinations of uh, the browns and the beiges and the skin colors i like the beastmen aesthetic i like the look of it i just don't think i i don't know depending on how the how expensive the box is going to be because you know how they make those uh, kill team boxes now where you could just buy a kill team and mix and match make them any way you want to that's uh, games workshop is making a lot of models man i was just thinking of the underworlds all of the war bands for the underworlds and then now you've got these kill team boxes that uh i'm not sure if you can use them in warhammer 40k in in the game but Kill Team is really blowing up and um, Underworlds for Warhammer, for Age of Sigmar. So you can collect some really cool looking things. And yeah, th you know what? These Beastmen, they look pretty good. I wish there was a 360 view that we could check out the models. But um, yeah, they, look, they really do look like they just took the fantasy sculpts and said, okay, let's give them a little bit more of an action pose so they're not all like s standing the same way. Let's give them some running guys. Let's give them some guys uh, twisted at the at the waist, like they're hitting something or they're charging in for a kill. And let's let's maybe um, fix their equipment. So we'll give this one guy a holster. We'll give this other guy some pipes on his axe. So even though they do look pretty low tech, you've got some high tech flourishes and embellishments. It would have been more interesting if some of these beastmen had. Like, we're strapping on bits of Space Marine armor, or they had more, you know, more things to tie them into the 40k aesthetic. Because right now, they look pretty much like Fantasy Beastmen with a couple of conversions to them to make them look uh, science fiction. Anyways, what do you guys think? I love the Beastmen. I love painting them in Fantasy. I w I'm curious to know what you think if you're a 40k player. Do you think these look like they fit? The Do you think they look like they would be fun to paint and to play up? Uh, who knows? Let me know down below in the comments. Thanks for watching.